we have to first start with a solid and a good foundation before we start to put in the beautification and the furnishing before we start to put the pretty curtain and everything do not let your house be beautiful but useless do not let your life be beautiful but useless So I have like a small mini phone game problem where I tend to play the game a little bit too late into the night. I don't know if I'm the only one. Okay, don't judge me. <laughs> but um, while I play this game, one of the things that pop up are ads. And one of the popular ad that tends to pop up is an ad where you see um a young woman and her kid out in the snow freezing and then they're telling you oh help this lady and then they put her in a house and you're supposed to pick the first problem to solve and then play a puzzle and then once you accomplish that puzzle then it comes with the stuff fixed the problem that you clicked on being fixed the issue with this ad is that it doesn't allow you to pick the problem you want to fix it just randomly picks something and sometimes they're in a house, a broken down house, and it decides that it wants to paint the walls instead of fixing a leak with water coming into and filling the house. And it is cold, so most likely it's like very cold water. And it decides that it wants to paint the house. After painting the house, the water is still leaking in and then it tells you, oh, the game has failed. And you're like, what? I didn't even do anything. I didn't even touch anything. You were just showing me an ad. So one of the days that this ad popped up, um, the Holy Spirit used that as a teaching moment for me. And he says that sometimes, and he said that sometimes this is also how people want to do their life and build their lives they want to paint the walls to make it look very pretty but they have not fixed the leak that makes the house functional the whole point of a house is to protect you and keep you safe to to let the outside weather the outside situation you are kept safe you are kept well just imagine we didn't have houses and then we're all exposed to storms and thunder and rain and maybe even heat i don't think most of us are going to survive even in the olden days where maybe they did not have they did not have houses like how we have they did find the importance of shelter they rather they understood the importance of shelter functional shelter it might not have been the prettiest but it was functional And sometimes our lives are described as houses. And why am I saying this story and bringing up the story and bringing up the lesson with it that the Holy Spirit taught me? Is that sometimes in our in our lives, we when we're hurt and we're we have been seriously hurt, sometimes we want to give this presentation that everything is fine. Um, I'm going to take. A popular I guess example after you are maybe you're in a relationship with someone and then the person hurts you and breaks up with you or you find out the person is cheating you have encountered this hurt this relational hurt what what is said most times is that we are to dress up you know go to a club find a rebound And that is you trying to paint the walls instead of trying to fix the leak. Because now you're going to have this rebound. You're not going to hurt the rebound because there's no way you are able and capable of having a proper, non-toxic, healthy relationship with someone else so soon. Because your leak is still there. You still need to heal. You still need to find out what's up. It's not only with romantic relationships, but it also happens with other social relationships as well. Maybe you had a really bad boss that made you feel um, 
made you feel some type of way maybe made you feel like you were a failure or something even if you leave that toxic working environment if you are to go to another place without dealing with the things that were trying to be planted into you then most likely you're going to go into this new environment and you're going to have issues and it might be that the issues are coming from you because you have not dealt with some things But then you're now going to stop painting it as, oh, now I have another bad boss. No, it's you. You're not keeping up with your schedules. You're not keeping up with your work schedules. You're tardy. You're late. You're doing things. And it's not because you cannot do these things. It's because maybe in your other work environments, you did put your best. But it's like it was looked down on. It was stamped on. And then... Before leaving that environment, you started to slack off. And I guess in the slacking off, it helped you. It made you to dissociate excellence from your work because you were not getting the full results from it. And now you're going to a place where you can get your full result for the good work you put in, but you cannot put in the good work because of what you have not dealt with in the other place. So... Proverbs 24, 3 to 4 Amplified in the Bible shows us how we are to build our houses. We are to first start with a solid and a good foundation before we start to put in the beautification and the furnishing, before we start to put the pretty curtain and everything. Do not let your house be beautiful but useless. Do not let your life be beautiful but useless. You can have a facade of going out and looking big. You know, you you have this flamboyant, luxurious lifestyle. You paint as if everything is fine, as if you're rich, as if you're good. Maybe your marriage is good. And you're not actively trying to find the issue. If you were broke, it is best for you to cut according to your coat and build your money to a point where you can actually have this lifestyle. If you are hurt and you actually really want a healthy relationship, work on yourself. Find a therapist, a good godly therapist. Find good people around you that can help you through this healing journey and actually heal and bring you know, healthy into a healthy relationship. Do not be the toxic one in a healthy relationship, please. (laughs) And then at the end of it, you will still get what you are attaining for. You will still get the beautiful house with the good and solid foundation. And it's going to last way longer. You're going to enjoy it way longer. Like even, even Queen Esther, in Esther 2 verse 12, she had to go through six months of um the oil that has been um the ointment of myrrh she has to go through six months of that before she went through the fragrances of six months again like six months of putting on fragrances if i don't know why the mirror was i hope i'm pretty sure it has a reason but if you also need to be hygienically hygienically clean before you put on perfume, then I'm guessing the mirror has something to do with the body as well. In order that by the time you put on the fragrance, it is more long-lasting. It is more useful to you, basically. So if Queen Esther had to go through all that, a year of all that, before then picking out the cute clothes to go and meet the king, then I would actually really highly recommend that even as the bible states you have to go through the process properly it might be long it might be tasking it might be more than you're than you're asking for you're like i just want to reach the promised land why do i have to go through the wilderness why do i have to go to the mountain and collect the commandments why i just want to get to the promised land like i've been a slave in egypt for 400 years It's enough. Just transport me to the promised land. But if you enter into the promised land without working out what was placed in you in Egypt as a slave, you will enter into the promised land with the mentality of a slave. And what you are meant to enter into as a king, you will will not. You might have the position of a king, but not the mindset and the authority of a king. Because you also need to get to where like you need to get to where you're going to mentally emotionally financially before physically getting there i'm just taking this now as 
I said physically, the last one, because I don't know why. But sometimes it might also be that you might also need to get there physically before you actually enter into the promised land, wherever that promised land is for you. And I just want to pray for you today that whatever you're going through, whatever healing process you're going through, whatever it is that you need God to walk with you through, about, up, on, then I really pray that you get everything that you need to at the time you need to get it as well you might not get into the promised land or rather you might get to the promised land and skip over the promised land because you do not walk through the wilderness and i pray that your journey in the wilderness is not going to break you i pray it builds you i don't think anybody that has walked with god in the wilderness has been broken no matter how long it took You are built up. You are built up as a nation. You are built up as a people. You are built up as a person. And I pray that your journey and your road in the wilderness builds you up to the fullest capacity. So that when you get to the promised land, you will enter in with the authority of who you are in Christ. Wherever that thing is for you. I pray that your healing process is thorough. And whatever grace you need in this journey is given to you a hundredfold in jesus name i pray amen all right you're at the end of this video thank you for being for getting all the way here i'm Bernie stauda the co-host of this podcast as well with my trusty beautiful beloved holy spirit that is also the co-host of this podcast please if you're new here feel free to look around like subscribe um share comments um and then if you're old here nice to see you again hope you're doing well and i hope you're continually strengthened and encouraged in the holy spirit and i love you all with the love of christ take care of yourself and i'll see you next week bye